Hey guys, uh, I thought I would do a video uh, to show one of my uh, one of my first e races uh, on Race Room. Uh, I've decided to join the e racing GP Southeast Asia Championship. We had the first round in the Chang International Circuit last weekend. Uh, we just had Motiki uh, yesterday. Uh, there's a grid full of I think 30 drivers, two groups, and a final. Um, it's been quite action packed. Uh, if you see, I've got my little sim behind here, and uh, yeah, had a lot of fun with it. Thanks to Alex Young for setting up the championship. I thought I'd take you guys through uh, race one from Mati yesterday, where in qualifying, I had an issue, my headphones disconnected, and then I spun on my lap, so I started last. But uh, it gives us some good entertainment to try and come through the field. So uh, yeah, let's have a little watch through, shall we? So the, the main important thing with this at the start is to preload the clutch in the right way, um, which I think I can get perfect on this time. Um, so you see the others pull away from me a little bit, it's kind of a little bit tricky to get right. So coming into the turn one of Matigi, down a second gear, you'll see I had a couple of cars spin in front of me, managed to get through that. With a nice little bump there, it was a bit of a crazy opening wrap as you can see. Coming down to turn three, heavy on the brakes, about the 70 meter mark. You can see I've still got someone down the inside, Daryl Brady there in the Porsche. He stays on the inside, but I might hang out around the outside. And then S Lee goes a little bit wide, so I try and have a little look around the outside at this point. If I get laid on the brakes, try and get it turned in. Just about managed to get the move done around the outside. So not a bad start. Um, get the turn in here for the long right hander. Uh, this is a really tricky corner in race room, I find. Because in race room, the physics are kind of a bit different to, let's say, I racing and R factor. It's all about how much load and yaw you put in the car and how you put the cobbler. Um, so, especially at this corner as well, if you don't get that turn in and get all the power with the car going forward as straight as possible, you can lose like a tenth of a half just, just in that alone. And then coming down to the head, in, Heavy on the brakes just before the 50, get it rotated and try and get the exit for the long back straight. The great thing about racing in this championship is it's very, very competitive. So most of the guys are within, say, eight tenths of a second. So, you know, it's very small differences. Um, this is a 15 minute race here. Race two is also 15 minute reverse grid. And then there's a race three, which is 25 minutes with a pitch stop, which is, uh, which is good fun. Now this corner is a very difficult one, um, trying to get the exit there without running wide. If you run a little bit wide in race room, you just lose two, three tenths, guaranteed, no matter what you do. So you have to make sure you keep on the black stuff. So here I try and turn in and break in a straight line as much as possible, and then try and get that straight exit. Now you see, we've got a little bit of fun in front of us. Alex, uh, Alistair Young is running it wide and then Hazik steering had broken or something, so I overtook three cars in one go there, uh, which was uh, good fun. And now, well, you see Savino's come back on the inside, but then I hang out around the outside um, to get the run on him. We now have Arjun Maney uh, in front of us, who is, I think, an Indian driver. He's done GP3 and um, even F2 and things, so yeah, a uh, real world driver who's uh, been racing on the simulators as well and then yeah like I was saying before this one you have to kind of break slightly earlier than you think really rotate it and use the curve and then as you go around this one nice and gradually pick the power up so you don't get too much understeer because if you've got too much um, latitude or G in, in the simulator you lose quite a lot more time than what you would in, in real life so there's a particular style to drive in this, this sim um, which is, uh, it's kind of difficult to get used to. I started last week with this, with uh, the Bearer, uh, where I managed to pull away with the win, the second and the third. Um, I did like five, six hours a day on race with them. Um, for this one, I only practiced like two, yeah, probably two hours or so. So um, I wasn't massively prepared coming into this event. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wasn't enjoying driving the track so much. But I really enjoyed the racing, so. You know, it's quite a nice thing to be to be part of um, and enjoy the uh, the action. So as you see, coming up to here, so Matigi, you break just before the 50, and you have to kind of turn it in a little bit. 
a running bike brake bias of about 55%. Which is a little bit more rearward than the default setup. Everyone's running with a fixed setup for this as well. But you can change the traction control and you can change the brake bias. So I ended up going with 55% and traction control 4. So yeah, just to help with getting that acceleration off the corners. Um, if you have TC3, for example, it just doesn't accelerate things because things like half a this is a really tricky one, trying to get the rotation and get the power out. When I was trying to do my practice, um, the Cricket Boys were always so much faster out there. Um, and the BMW, it was very good, I'm in the BMW GC3, it was very good in, um, in Birram. It felt great and on, on the race runs it just felt very controllable, much better than the AMG. Um, or, you know, like the Porsche, which was just nowhere for me around there. Um, so I'm committed to the BMW. But around this track, it just felt a little bit like the boat was too heavy, wasn't rotating enough. I tried some laps in the AMG, it felt much better, but um, the lap time still wasn't there for me. So, yeah, anyway, if you change cars, then you push yourself two championship points, but you can only change once. So this is six rounds of championship. Um, next week is in, uh, in Dubai International Circuit. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I thought, you know, BMW is probably the best bet overall for the, for the championship. So you try and hold it through here, you have to get that inside on the left, and then run the inside with the curve on the right. If you cut too much, it will delete your lap time, which obviously in the race doesn't matter too much. In qualifying, it's a really important not to lose your lap, because it's only one lap qualifying. So you see A Hazik and Arjun Mai up front just having a bit of a battle, so I'm thinking if I can capitalise. I think right now I'm running in sixth place, um, having started in the back of the grid, so, you know, not, not a bad uh, come through the field so far. Uh, race one actually holds the most points out of race one and race two, because race two is reversible, so there's less points available. Um, and, uh, I, at this moment, as I was racing, I was joint championship leader with Miko Nassi, who's a fellow racing driver and sim driver as well. Does a lot in race room. Um, yeah, good guy, actually helped me with a couple of settings for this event because I didn't have time to practice. I've been busy on high racing all week. And uh, yeah, as you see, they're just having a bit of a scrap in front of us. So I'm just trying to keep everything as nice and clean as possible. Um, tire wear is on, uh, even though you can't see it in the graphic right now. So, you know, you want to try and make a joke so it's not too scrappy because in this, if you are pushing too much, it's not fast. You have to, like, push up to just exactly the right point. Anything more and you just lose your tyres um, and, and you can be lap time as well. So, it just, uh, yeah, you have to try and keep it as good as possible. This is a really tricky corner. Uh, you have to break just before the 100, using all of this excess road, and then you have to hook into this little bit there just to get the power on and get the run out of the corner. Um, you have to make sure you get this curve on the left hand side. And then this is a really weird style. I missed too much there and then I'm too slow for the right. But still, I've got a good run out of that, that last corner. And you can see the two guys up ahead. Uh, Arjun has just passed Azzy. So now, you know, I need to try and capitalize while he's feeling not so good that he's been passed. Uh, I need to get up on him as quickly as possible. Now, I also have uh, on my wheel setting, uh, you can set up uh, the, the light flashing and uh, you have a virtual mirror. So, uh, you know, if you're, you've got someone behind you, you flash the lights, it kind of puts a bit more more pressure on them than, uh, than if you're just driving behind them. So, you know, I think I, I just start to use the lights a little bit just to say, look, I'm coming for you. You can see I've already closed the gap to him. Um, the main thing, uh, certainly from Vera and last weekend, uh, round one of the championship, uh, you know, with sim racing in general, you have to kind of not be annoyed. Uh, it's the same as real life racing, to be honest. This one, I really, I did enjoy driving Matigi in practice, um, and I've just been on iRacing all week. So, um, you know, this one it was kind of like. Yeah, because I didn't get all the practice in and I was kind of annoyed and everything in the world going on at the moment is kind of getting to me a little bit. So, uh, I was, you know, this race was good. Um, I felt quite happy with it. But the uh, race two and race three, I've made a couple of you know, silly mistakes, which generally, like, you know, if you keep your, keep your mind clean and you don't get too annoyed, you can 
come through and even if you start last you can normally do a good job because the field is so close um, you know if you have a slightly better pit stop or you do work you know you can easily really find yourself racing in the front so uh, yeah, you can see I'm closing the gap now trying to put as much pressure as possible he didn't quite get the turn in right he's run a little bit wide you see where he just has that bit too much load I got a nice clean run out so I'm now gaining on him showing my nose a little bit there now he's really got a very different line to me at that point um, so he, he's really trying to focus much more on the exit whereas I'm just trying to send as much in stop the car rotate and go um, I find it's much better um, it's safer because you don't have the load and you don't have any potential oversteer which you might spin with on the way into the corner and uh, it's also slightly better on the tyres I find so yeah, coming down here, just breaking off the 100 meter board, using a bit of curve on the left. Trying to nip that bit of curve there. I've got a nice clean run out now. Um, you see, he still pulls away a little bit there. I, I, I couldn't figure out how to get more speed out um, throughout, throughout this race. But uh, now I know that he's kind of, yeah, so he's starting to make mistakes. I know he's under pressure. Um, so now I just need to capitalize on that. And that's something I think which race drivers have an advantage. And, so there I go for a bit of a send, take the first gear, try and get the run. I can't remember if I did manage to get in here. I think he's still on my, my right hand side. So let's see how we go as we come down to it. So I'm late on the brakes around the outside. I think he comes back on the inside, yeah. So, you know, it's decent racing here. It is a lot of fun racing these guys, to be honest. I only have a single 23 inch screen, so my visibility isn't great. Uh, I'm thinking to go to VR so I can have more, more visual. And there we go, so nicely down the inside there, get the job done, take first gear, get the drive out, um, and now we're kind of, you know, it's just a case of trying to push up to Arjun as much as possible, but it's a short race, and you know, he's three, four seconds ahead of me, so, you know, it's not like it's going to be uh, a big so I just need to drive nicely there. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, I think the race drivers have a small advantage in the sense that when it comes to racing, we're... I would probably I'd say more calm because in real life, you know, pressure is obviously really on if you have uh, you know your sponsors or your driver or whatever whatever, you know, that pressure, that external pressure. Um, we're used to that. So in sim racing it's literally kind of like if you see that's so like Max and Stappen do a move which you think, oh yeah, it's pretty good and it's crazy good and everything. Um, and it's on the limit, like here, we're just like, oh yeah, we'll just absolutely send it because you don't have any risk in that sense. I'm um, sure you can spin a one part, but you know, I think it's just, yeah, we're, we're, we're a slightly better place for when it comes to racing because the other day we're, we're race drivers. Um, but the sim guys are very good at racing, they are clever, but I think the race drivers do have a bit of an edge. Um, but when it does come to overall lap time, we found that the first you can. Uh, so Nico and I were fastest. Um, I had the fastest time, I think, I was like a 33, 9, 0, 6 or something in practice. Um, but then in qualifying, yeah, Nico got the pole, I was the two. And then, yeah, so it was all very, you know, but we had an engine pace, but we had been driving for like a week. Um, the sim guys, they can, you know, they've done. I don't know, probably a month's worth of hours on race room itself. I checked some of their profiles. I, I had done like two hours of when I started, you know, uh, um, like this event, for example. So it's it's slightly different. They can jump on and find the lap time much quicker. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's quite interesting seeing the battle between the race drivers and the city drivers. So I think here I went in a little bit too deep. I've got Yazik on the back of me still. So I'm just kind of like trying to lose the toe a little bit because the toe in this game, the slipstream, um, it's uh, it's a little bit more than it is in real life. Actually, I found a theorem like uh, the slipstream effect is kind of too strong. So if you can just break the toe a bit, um, then it's worth doing. And I also find the sim drivers, or some of them, especially this event, they didn't follow me uh, when I did try and break the toe. So it kind of, yeah, it helped out, uh, which was So you see the race is kind of all settled down now um, and this one yeah it's only I think it was a 15 minute race so you choose your fuel um, which uh, you just put as much fuel in the car as you need 
no tyre change, no pit stops in this one. It's literally just a sprint race to the end. I finished, uh, I think it was fifth. I got decent points for that. And um, and then that just put me in a, in a good step for, for the next race where you know, I made a couple of mistakes. <laughs> but uh, it's, the, the main thing is, you know, in this time of extended off season with uh, the world situation, let's say, uh, it's uh, it's a lot of fun just to be able to race these guys and, uh, and enjoy enjoy these battles, which normally would be had on the racetrack, but uh, yeah, we're having it virtually right now. But I think the production quality of, of the events which you're seeing now, I mean, Alex Young, he started this up last week, and we had a test race the week before, like in Shanghai, and you know, you've got a couple of commentators, you've got good kind of TV production, which is the same time we do this. Um, and I, it's quite it's quite cool actually, and, and you can watch it on you can watch it on YouTube live, um, or you can even watch back the races. And uh, I've watched back each of the races from the TV point of view. It's really enjoyable racing, like from the front down to the very back. It's very competitive. So uh, yeah, definitely I would say you know, watch it uh, if you've got your own home setup. Then you can try and qualify for the race. You just have to be within the top 30 of the competition leaderboard, which if you go on race room, um, which I think it's free, um, and then you just click competition in game, and then find the uh, e racing GP Southeast Asia, uh, and you can join and set that time and you can join the race. Um, so it's a good way to get involved in, in, in esports and in, in racing. Uh, myself, I actually, uh, 10 years ago, I, this is how I got into motorsport. Uh, I was racing, well, I, I went to an event a place called the Race Centre in uh, Charlton Sport in the UK. And uh, a real, real world driver, a friend of mine, uh, Harry Tickle, uh, he was there. And I think his event was like, um, yeah, if you win the race, you've got tickets to go and see the British F3 at Brands Hatch in July of 2009 when Daniel Ricciardo was racing. I think he won that weekend. And, um, and yeah, so I, I went along and I, I raced and I won. Then I went to the Red uh, Brands Hatch to watch, and I was like, "Oh my god, I love this!" And then, and then I just I didn't stop until I got into a go kart and started racing. So uh, yeah, I mean, sim is a great way to, to move into real world racing, and I'm very fortunate enough to, uh, well, have a career next to the current situation, um, and uh, you know, to be able to get my feet in real racing. So uh, yeah, anyway, I think uh, I think we're pretty much done on that race. That's the 15 minute race up. And uh, yeah, really enjoyable. And uh, yeah, look out for my next video, which will be race two, uh, where I made a couple of mistakes, but uh, there was some good fun racing. Right. Cheers, see you later.